artist gets murdered. And we was beefing for real. Like people was like dying and this and that. And it was just like, it was, it was blocking a lot of money. People didn't want to touch you. You know what I'm saying? You know, your rap friends, somebody gets shot, your rap friends stop picking up, the label stop picking up. Mm. Nah, it gets, it gets crazy. You know what I'm saying? It gets crazy. But now it's even crazier because really? they, they getting life insurance on artists. At least back then we didn't have that. Somebody told me that shit. Yeah. Is a label signing an artist in good faith if you're taking a life insurance out of them? No, you're praying on, you're praying on his death. You're praying on making millions on his death. Or are they being realistic, though? Both. They're being realistic. And, they, you know, you're supposed to have life, you know what I'm saying, life insurance anyway. But when the label does it, if you don't have one, that's crazy. Here's what J.D. Kiss had to say. Record labels are being successful off nonsense. And some, uh, somebody went out, did something stupid, recorded a song about it, and was able to get a lot of streams, and, and that became a thing with the whole drill. You know what I mean? They actually going out, getting active and doing stuff, and then going to the studio and make a song about what they just did. And that should that should get nipped in the bud as soon as it got created. But nobody's going to these labels saying they wrong for this. We just blaming it on the kids. So like my brother Stow said, he don't like to just put all the blame on his young artists because the radio stations are making them the top songs of the playlist and the labels are still signing. They even got it. They putting out life insurance on these young kids now. Wow. The labels. Because they, they're gambling on you to do some wow. dumb so they can profit after you die. So this is getting ridiculous. Yeah, bro, it's fucked up. Um, Rich homie Kwan has passed away at age 34. I don't even want to believe this shit right now. Like, I don't even want to say the words rest in peace because I'm I'm having a hard time even accepting this shit, bro. I just did a show with him three weeks ago. Like, uh. we performed on the same stage and I, I actually came back to watch his show, bro. And like, to see that shit, it's like crazy. Yeah, I mean, I did his first interview ever, really, in 2013. Uh, some type of way was just getting buzzing in Atlanta. I was out there for some BT weekend type thing. And, yeah. you know, I hooked up with his manager, Fly. And, uh, yeah, we went to his uh, apartment, you know, and uh, did the interview in his lobby. He's always a good dude, man. Always a good dude. We've done, like, maybe three or four interviews over the years. Always had a good spirit about him. Yeah. Good attitude. Never talked bad about anybody. Was yeah. happy to be in the position that he's in. But but they're saying it's over an overdose. That's some fake-ass pills, bro. Nine times out of ten, it's probably some fake-ass pills. Like, I don't yeah. knock nobody who do what they do, but... It's too fucking dangerous to get anything off the streets. I don't know if that's the case, but it need to be said anyway. Like, yeah, this I shit mean, is fucked up, bro. Nunca está acá.